So here we have a new question. It says a billiard ball is dropped from a height of 1.2 meters and it hits the ground and rebounds to a maximum height of one meter. So obviously not as high as it was originally dropped from. What velocity does it hit the ground? So let's start by drawing a kind of a picture of what ha what's happening here. Here's the ball initially. Here's the ball finally. And this is the ball's initial position and this is the ball's final position. Uh, sometimes some students have asked me, just as a side note, what's the difference between D and delta D? And so delta D is a displacement, it's a change in position, whereas D itself is just a location. So D can either be di or df, but delta d is equal to df minus di. In fact, delta anything is equal to final minus initial of whatever that variable may be. Delta just means change. Now they do have the same units, but a delta, as I said, is the change in position, whereas the D by itself is just a specific location. Hopefully that clears up what the difference between delta D and D is. Now, regarding this question, we now know that if this is a height of positive 1.2 meters, and this is a height of zero, therefore, if we go delta D is equal to final position minus initial position, this is going to equal 0 minus 1.2, which gives us an, an answer of negative 1.2 meters. Now, the way that I interpret negative delta Ds is me, it means that it is a loss of altitude. In other words, this object has gone down. If you have a positive delta D, it means the object has gained altitude. So this is all, of course, um, dependent on my positive, oops, on my positive direction. And I will always choose, oops. OK, I just realized you can rotate <laughs> things on this screen. Uh, this is my positive direction and so I'm gonna choose it's a convention I'm gonna choose up as being positive okay uh, now if I do that I know therefore that my acceleration of this thing has to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared due to gravity um, now what else do I know? Well, I know one other thing as well, and I'll, perhaps I'll do this in a different color here. I know that my initial velocity is equal to zero, and that's because of the word dropped right there. If you see the word drop, it means the initial velocity is zero. Now what we're trying to determine here is what's the velocity when it hits the ground that is going to be just before it hits the ground. And so that's going to be our final velocity. And we'll put a question mark there. Now, if we um, take a look at what we have, what are the variables which we have? We have delta D, we have A, we have VI and VF. There's really only one equation that works or is applicable in this case also make note that there is no time of the three equations you know what were the three equations uh, let me change colors back the three equations were VF squared equals V initial squared plus 2A Delta D and the other one was Delta D equals 1 half a T squared plus VIT 
and finally VF equals AT plus VI. Notice these two have velocity, or sorry, time in them, and I don't have time at all, so therefore it has to be this one that I'm going to use to solve this problem. And it is in already in the correct format, so all I need to do now is plug in my values. So if I plug my values in for this, I'll get v final squared is equal to, copying from here, 0, because my initial velocity is 0, plus 2 times a, which is negative 9.8, times delta d, which is negative 1.2. Now, notice my negative times a negative is going to give me a positive number. So my v final squared is going to equal 23.52. Uh, now that's v squared. So now in order to get that, I need to take the square root of that. And I get 4.85 meters per second. So that's my answer. And by the way, um, just to be clear, take a look at the direction of my final velocity, notice that it is down. And notice that I did not write, I, I didn't say down here. My velocity has a direction. You might say to yourself, well, why did my answer turn out to be positive? And the answer is really my answer turned out to be positive or negative. Because when you had take the square root of a number, the answer could be positive or negative, right? Like for example, What's the square root of 4? Is it 2? Or is it plus or minus 2? Because minus 2 times minus 2 is also 4. So in this case, since I took the square root of both sides, my answer here really should be negative because it's going down, as you can see here. OK? So let me now go to the next part of the question. So the second question is, what velocity does it leave the ground? In order to do this, we need to draw a, another picture. And um, I'll do that here. So in this case, now this is the, oops, that's a bit too small. This is the initial position and this is the final position and this is at one meter and this is at zero meters and there's some more information that we can put onto this so therefore like I can write down my delta D is equal to positive 1.0 meters but in addition let me write down the velocity here the velocity at the top, which is now the final velocity, is equal to 0 because notice that the question said, what is the max height? Sorry, it, re it rebounds to a maximum height at, of 1 meter. That means that at that maximum height, the velocity must be 0 or it, or the velocity wouldn't be zero at the maximum height. So that's inferred. Now, the other thing which we need to write down here is the, oops, that kind of moves things around a little bit, is this is the initial velocity, and that's a question mark. What velocity does it leave the ground? So that's going up. So at this point, I know that I, I'm going to end up with the same equation, v final <laughs> squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta d. However, now I'm solving for vi. So I can take this term to the other side of the equals and have 
vf squared minus 2a delta d equals vi squared. And now I can plug in my values. Now I know my, my final velocity here is 0, as you can see right here. So 0 minus 2 times, what's a? Negative 9.8, again, because up is positive, times a delta d. Now my delta d is positive 1.0. And so now, my answer is still going to be a positive answer because a negative times a negative is a positive. I'm going to get 19.6. And that's vi squared. So if I take the square root of 19.6, I get. 4.43. Yeah. So now I know the velocity that it's coming off of the ground at. So now I know that this is there. The next question. If the ball was in contact with the ground for 0 0.01 seconds, which is 1 one hundredth of a second, what was the ball's acceleration while rebounding off the ground? So let's go back to the original definition of acceleration, which is delta v over delta t. This is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. Now we can write down change this is delta remember is final minus initial and the time is the elapsed time and that's given that's here in the question so we know it's just 0 0.01 seconds what we need to figure out now is what's the final velocity and what's the initial velocity so if I draw this again because this is this is the tricky part here and this is the part that most students will get wrong let me draw part, let me say part one and put a kind of an arrow here. And then I'll say this is part two. So in part one, what we have is we have the ball starting at the top as our initial position and then going to the bottom as our final position as it hits the ground. Then in part two, the initial, right, so this is like uh, v equals 0 here. Here, this v we calculated to be, that was the answer to part 1. And that was 4.85. four point eight five and then this velocity here that's our initial velocity for the second part was I believe that was uh, four point four three and then up here my final velocity was zero again now obviously the distances are not the same uh, but in this case, we're not, we're not, we don't care about the distances. All we want to find is the final velocity and the initial velocity. However, this is only while it is touching the ground. So what we really need to focus on is this is as it's just before it touches the ground, and this is just after it touches the ground. So in other words, this is my new initial velocity. This is my new final velocity. This is just before the ground. And this is after the ground. OK? Therefore, I can now plug these values into my equation up here. 
However, and this is where you need to be careful. This is what I was mentioning where students get this wrong. You can't simply go 4.85 minus 4.43 divided by 0 0.01 seconds, which is the time given here. We can't do that. And the reason why we can't is because these velocities are in different directions. This velocity, this 4.85, is down. This 4.43 is up. And if I chose up as being positive, therefore this 4.85 is actually a negative. And I'll emphasize that in red. Notice that when I first wrote it up here, I did specify that it was negative to indicate that it was going down. Okay? Although it wasn't Chris it wasn't easily clear because my math uh, calculated a positive number for me. I had to deduce the fact that it was negative because it was going down. So now look what happens to the math here. You see, if I now go final velocity, um, which is, uh, let me change color again. 4.43, that's my final velocity, minus, now I got to go negative 4.85. Notice this is essentially like adding the two. If I was to subtract them, I would get the wrong answer. So when I do this calculation, I get uh, 9.28 divided by 0 0.01 which gives me 900 and approximately 928 meters per second squared. That is hu that's a huge acceleration. And when I compare that to the acceleration of gravity, all I have to do is uh, divide that by 9.8, and I get essentially 95 g. So this ball is experiencing 95 times the acceleration of gravity in that one one hundredth of a second while it is hitting the ground. Mind you, this is a really elastic, this is almost a perfectly elastic ball because it initially it drops from a height of uh, 1.2 and it goes back up to a height of one. So it doesn't bounce all the way back up, but it bounces a significant portion of the way back up. So it's extremely elastic. Billiard, billiard balls are quite elastic. Um, I know that sounds odd. A, a, a very hard rubber ball could be really elastic too, but billiard balls are quite, um, they don't lose a lot of energy in a collision. In any case, uh, that's the end of this problem.